have looked at how to restore oysters, and we've done that based upon a scientific understanding of uh, what environments oysters do best in. Um, we learned that the oyster reefs of today are about only half as tall as the oyster reefs were in 1900. Uh, the reason for that is that oystermen harvest the shells that oysters are attached to, as well as the living oysters. They do that with dredges that are dragged along the bottom and with something called tongs that are hand manipulated to take captures of oysters and the shells underneath them. So we could hypothesize as scientists that by reducing the height, the oysters now at the lower reefs would not get the same flows of water. That means that they don't get the same delivery rate of food per, per unit time. In addition, we learned by doing experiments in the Lower Noose River that those oysters under faster flows on tall reefs uh, actually were in better condition. Their body mass index for the unit length was greater and those oysters fought off disease. So those oysters indeed, if they were in faster flows, didn't die at the same rates under the threat and the actuality of oyster disease. Um, so we built these reefs. Those reefs were successful. They created populations of large harvestable sized oysters that have persisted to this day. And the design of those reefs that we created has been propagated through to marine fisheries, to environmental organizations, not just in this state, but worldwide to try to restore oysters in their local estuaries. Many NGOs worldwide, uh, TNC in particular, the Nature Conservancy, have said that if our estuaries don't have their oysters restored, then the estuary is not restored. They're missing a key linchpin of how the ecosystem is structured and how it's made valuable for people and for fish, crabs, and shrimp. Um, we concur with that. And our work, in fact, has emphasized the oyster as a habitat provider and as a habitat modifier, not as a fish to go on the table. We indeed want higher oyster catches. We want the fishermen to become prosperous. We want the oysters to be there in the restaurants and where we want to eat them and when. But we also recognize that oysters provide what we call ecosystem services that are very important. First off, if you build an oyster reef linearly along a shoreline and make it tall enough, that oyster reef not only grows oysters, but it serves as a breakwater to waves. So the wave energy is dissipated right at the reef, and that doesn't make its way to the shoreline where it could erode marsh, where it could erode uh, the backyard of homes, or even homes themselves. So the oyster reef plays a very important structure mechanically in an engineering sense. Oyster reefs do things to the biogeochemistry of the water. Specifically, what oyster reefs do is they induce denitrification. That's the process of turning nitrogen in the form of a fertilizer, which is harmful in these estuaries which already are fertilized too much because that leads to uh, fish kills, turning that nitrogen into or into nitrogen gas into the atmosphere, which is inert and not causing any environmental problems. Uh, oyster reefs serve as habitat for many, many fishes, for crabs and for shrimps. And so those are the base of the food chain. And in many cases, those organisms are targeted directly by, by fishermen, blue crabs, stone crabs, and uh, the pinnaid shrimps in particular. And so what we have achieved is a fundamental reconsideration of why oysters are present and why oysters are important and how they can serve the environment and the ecosystem. They serve not only people as food, but if we protect our oysters, restore our oysters, uh, what we get is ecosystem services that help other aspects of the system and keep our system healthy.